Mm. Love a good cerveza. Alessandro, do you know why Mexican cervezas are generally brewed in that Pilsner pale lager style? Do you have any idea where that style came from and why it's so heavily used down there? Uh, actually, I do. So oh. the the history of brewing beer in, in Mexico started actually when the first explorers came uh, in Mexico in the 1500s. They tried, but they didn't really succeed at it uh, back then. But in the 1800s, when uh, Mexico was under the Holy Roman Empire, uh, and uh, so Germany, basically, there were a lot of immigrants coming from uh, Germany and Austria, and, and they kind of like brought that um, love for uh, lagers, uh, beers that were popular mm. in their homeland. So that's yeah, what started that, that phenomenon that has brought us those amazing beers like uh, Corona and many others that are now brewed in Mexico. And there's, you know, a lot of other, let's say, movements starting off, like craft beer movements starting off in Mexico right now. So the scene is actually very interesting. Uh, Mexico actually exports a ton uh, of their beer outside. So it's it's definitely something that is worth exploring. Well, I mean, Corona in general is one of the highest selling beers in the world. So it's pretty impressive that they've gone. And so is like Dos Equis and also uh, Modelo. These are all beers that you can find everywhere. So it's really interesting to hear that, that it's a style that kind of originated elsewhere, but that was brought down to Mexico and that they've sort of perfected to a sense with their own specific style. And one thing I wanted to ask you about too and talk about it, if you do a little research on the Mexican cerveza style, of course it's based as Alessandro just kind of explained in like the pale lager, the Pilsner, you can see a description of the ingredients that are used generally, they say they tend to use corn and other plants. This is what you can find if you search um, on Wikipedia, let's say, to get a little bit of a better idea of what gives Mexican beers that kind of little bit of a, a unique element that they do have. They tend to hint at that corn element, but I've seen that using corn, at least in brewing, isn't something that's necessarily new or innovative. Uh, a lot of people use different uh, either oils or starches that come from corn in the brewing process. So corn as an ingredient necessarily isn't that new, but there's not that much out there, right, man? Like, I mean, we tried, we both tried searching about it and there isn't too much information in terms of the ingredients of what goes into making a Corona or a Modelo or a Dos Equis. You're, you're absolutely right, my friend. Like uh, even looking on the Corona website uh, and you look at the ingredients, they say a bar, a malted barley, but then they say unmalted cereals, which is very yeah. broad. So they, it's you're not- It's so general. And, and like any kind of beer adjunct, uh, so any kind of substance that you add on top of barley, water, yeast yeah. uh, and hops, is gonna obviously create some differences. And that's what also is the beautiful thing about beers that every, Every brew is it's unique, and and corn specifically, I know for sure that it's used in some other beers. Like even in Italy, there's a couple of beers that use that. The way that it it, it probably influences the beer, uh, it, it adds like some layering of elements that lightness might come from that. Like because usually like the starches are easily uh, processed and they can produce more carbonation. But again, like looking at the literature, there is not a lot specifically about corn in beer. So it's it's an interesting topic. It's a legend. It's a very interesting topic. And guys, if anybody knows any specifics about that, let us know down below. Speaking of legends, I must talk, we have to talk about this, okay? Because when it comes to Corona, there is one legend that stands out above them all. And the legend is, we have my uh, bottle of Corona here. Normally this would be accompanied by, if it was full of course, but if you know, you're at a beach, a beach bar, or you know, you're sitting out on a patio on a warm summer day and you order a Corona, they bring you the bottle of Corona, there might be a lime wedge stuffed in the top of the bottle. So you might ask, what is the origin of the lime wedge? And I think it's kind of a default too. If you're in a bar, if you're in a club and you order a Corona, they put a lime wedge in there. So that lime wedge has kind of become synonymous almost with the flavor of Corona. Because you know, you pop it in and you let it mix together and that lime acidity kind of adds to it. So you might be wondering where did that come from? And there are three theories to this legend, three possible origins to how this started. The first being that Imagine you're down on the beach. You're down on the beach in Mexico. You're at an outdoor beach bar. 
and the bartender, somebody, you know, a group of people have come to the bar and they've ordered 12 Coronas. So the bartender lines up 12 Coronas on the bar, 12 bottles, pops all the caps. You might go away to get your wallet. The bottles are sitting out there on the bar. There could be some flies if you've been down on a beach, you know, flies can be a regular thing depending on the time of the year. So one of the theories is that the lime wedge started when the bartenders wanted to cap off the bottle so that flies couldn't get into the bottle and into the beer. So they started cutting off little pieces of lime and sticking them into the spout of the bottle to block flies from going in there. The second theory is that it was a sanitation issue and that acidity in the lime from the citrus acts as a kind of disinfectant. So what they would do is that they would run the lime around the outside of the bottle to disinfect the spout for anybody who would be drinking it from and stick it down in there. That's theory number two. Theory number three is that there was a cheeky bartender at one point who just wanted to start a new trend. And he came up with the idea, he thought it would look cool to stick the lime wedge down in there, serve the Corona with the lime wedge sticking out and that it would start a trend, which it did. It did start a trend because it's used pretty regularly. But those are the three theories. If you're looking readily online and you're trying to find how did Lyme first become associated with Corona, those are the three main legends that are out there. And nobody knows for sure. Nobody really knows. Nobody's spoken to this one bartender who first, first put a wedge of Lyme into a Corona. Nobody has. Nobody knows. It's up to you. Which legend do you believe? Which legend do you prefer? In the meantime, cheers. And quick question, Joe, was he a bartender or was he maybe a wizard sent over here to help us in the quest? That's a very good question, my friend. We might never know. But until then, the legend lives. Cheers, my friends. Cheers. Mm.